I don't know, I just find it humorous anymore. The things that I used to believe, the things I used to say. Yeah, there's people that say that God has to hide his face from sinners. Hide his face from sin. And he can't answer prayers of sinners. Not unless you repent and this and that. Your God is omnipresent and all-powerful. And he, know, he knows everything. But he has to hide his face from sin. And lust, too. But yet he could he could talk to Satan himself in the Old Testament and ask him, hey, so where you where you been, Satan? And, and you know, in Job, you do read your Bibles, right? Uh, I've been coming here, going there, to and fro. Ah, oh, so he, he, was, he was able to walk up to heaven where God was, but Christians today believe that God has to hide himself from sin, hide his face from sin, because he's so holy. But yet, he could talk to Satan, but yet he can't talk to his own creation if you're in the wrong denomination. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't make any sense. See, really, you people are just, that believe this way, just making stuff up, or you've been indoctrinated for a long time. And, and that evolves, too. That's an evolution of indoctrination. You know what I always say? May the pickle jars of indoctrination be broken. Yes, may you escape from the pickle jars. You'll be able to think for yourself. Yeah, I know it says, lean not on your own understanding. Yeah, I know it says that. And, and then it says, you know, you got to listen to us. You know, whatever we wrote here, God said. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. The be fear is the beginning of them indoctrinating you. Fear is a basic thing. See, if this, if this coffee here is too hot, and I don't respect that, I'll burn myself if I throw it into my mouth too fast. Oh, jeez. I should have been more fearfully respectful. Knowing that I boiled this coffee to let it brew. But it, it still was slightly below boiling, which would burn me. But I realized that. Because I feared the temperature of this coffee. Because scientifically, I knew that I would get burned. Now, sometimes I forget. Sometimes I'm, I'm ignorant of these things. I'm not always aware. And sometimes I stumble. We're back again. Once it comes to lust now, I'm on a roll. When it comes to lust, who do you think gave you that biological lust? God must have did it because God thought everything out. He said be fruitful and multiply. He wanted to make sure that his plan stayed in effect. You see? So that's why you have these urges. Most people do. And then when it comes to these Viagra guys, I don't understand that. I mean, I can understand you want to please her. I mean, we got it too far here. But if you need to keep taking Viagra, to, I mean, what's the sense of it? You either like doing it or you don't, or you it's just not good for you. I don't I don't know. Stay away from them. Stay away from <clears throat> Stay away from them drugs. No. What the heck happened? There? But anyway. God runs from sin. I mean, give me a break. Give me a break. God made everything. <laughs> Knowing what he's doing. What else? That guy said, uh, said go to that channel. Uh, that's tidbits of uh, knowledge about Christianity and stuff. I forget the name of it. Um, I saw the channel. I thought you were a bot. It is a there's no face, just the person talking, but I watched it, and it's it's complete indoctrinational bullshit, okay? You've had the channel up for a few years, too. You're doing quite well on the already thoroughly indoctrinated. And the others are trying to bring into the freedom stalls, mind, body, and all, free, dumb stalls. But, uh, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. I'm very tired. Uh. 
Well, you got you people got to realize. Do you know what Moses did in the book of Levitic Leviticus? You probably haven't even read Leviticus. Could you imagine if the church, just like communion, they reenacted Leviticus? They did the things in Leviticus just like you do the communion, the the grape juice, and the little wafer, the nugget, or the cracker. And uh, what if they reenacted Leviticus and, uh, you know, Moses? Do you know what Moses did? How he first made the priest with Aaron and Aaron's sons? He he gave them baths. Oh, that's a representation of Jesus bathing us and washing us of our sin. Yes, you could say that if you want to. There's many games you can play with the scriptures. After all, it's multiple choice. Seek and find and you will lose your mind. But anyway... Moses gave these guys baths. He convinced them that they would be priests. He would just let me bathe you guys. And then he put curious... Read your scriptures. Read your, read your scriptures. He put curious girdles and bonnets on them. Isn't that nice? Now, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're not, they don't like the... Uh, what do you call them? People... Uh, L-G-P-T-D-P... Z... Why, G folks, transcendental mentators, a lot of people don't like them. You know, it's another group, you know, it can be annoying. But, you know, Moses, it sounds like he was doing similar things with the guys back there. Putting curious girdles and bonnets on them after bathing them. And, and then he, while they were dressed like this, he had them... I need you to smite these bullocks and goats. Take a bullock, Aaron, and smite it. So they cut its throat with a knife, I would imagine, because the Bible doesn't say how it's done. But they drained blood out of it, so it most likely, most of these cults back then, blood, blood cults, and even of today, they cut the animal's throat because that's the easiest part to get the blood out. Put it in a bowl, Aaron, give me the bowl of blood. And uh, then he dipped his finger in the bowl of blood and put blood on the right ear of Aaron, blood on the right big toe of Aaron, blood on the right thumb of Aaron. And he did the same thing to, to his sons. Then, then he, he, he had the goat leg wave offering, see? Now he made the priest. Now the priest, Moses did it too. The priest take this goat. The goat leg, if they killed the goat, they, they waved it to God. Said, and it's called a wave offering. And you can imagine why it's called a wave offering. Because they were waving it to God, this bloody goat leg. Look, God, do you see us? Are you pleased with us? We're waving the bloody goat leg at you. Yes, you can read this in Leviticus. And if you don't think this is plain old, good old-fashioned superstition then there's something wrong with you. But, of course, you've molded it into the candy-coated blood guilt cult because Jesus smoothed everything all out, and now you all have to do is drink a little grape juice and take a cracker once a month and um, walk forward, rededicate your life unto the Lord, uh, go to a tent meeting like I used to do and have a revival service, you know, when you fell into lustful sins, you know, looking at girls and stuff, even though you weren't allowed to be gay, but you couldn't look at girls either. It was, it was very tough times, very tough times. Especially when you're 15, 16 years old. Yeah, especially you go into a soul meeting every Tuesday night, soul meeting, Wednesday night, prayer meeting, uh, Sunday, Saturday, setting up the church, turning a school into a church, then turning it back into a school again. Going to church on Sunday and Sunday night, that's five days a week I was in church. If you count Sunday morning and Sunday night. So then, then you end up sinning, you know, in the afternoon or something. You sin before you go back to church somehow. And, 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 and you know, then you got to be asked to... So, uh, Dave, will you, Dave Jr., will you please lead us all in prayer? Oh, damn, he picked me. My face is turning already. Oh, Damn, I had those lustful thoughts this afternoon. <sighs> yeah. And, and, yeah. But then I realized, you know, 40 plus years later, God programmed all this. 
if, you know, God exists. Oh, what do you mean if God exists? How do you know seven gods didn't, didn't make us all? Why is it one? Is it because what you were taught in the Holy Scriptures? The Holy Roland Scriptures? Yeah, they took your minds. About it. That's, that's all I can think of right now. But anyway, um, oh, somebody said science. Uh, how about if we just you know, push the Bible aside for a little bit? Do you really think that science is is going to prove, uh, you know, uh, the Big Bang and all that cosmopolitan? They didn't say that. They said, is science going to prove how the world was made or something like that? That doesn't matter. How about if human beings, you a act instinctively as a human being with common sense? And, by the way, science is a tool, a very valuable tool, but it don't give a damn about a fool. And there are a lot of fools out there in the atheist community also. Atheists, religious, and so-called skeptics, all of your minds have become septic. Sometimes it's good to hear another point of view. You just might find out you are being fed poo. Yeah. You are the experiment. No need for worryment. Now you bought the lie for four straight years, some of you. How many times do you get poked? Dumb suckers. Dumb suckers. I told you from the very beginning of the, the great TP hoarding event what was going to happen. Some of you great atheists, so called skeptics, say, well, it'll be over in four weeks. Enjoy your vacation. And others said, well, some people say it's about control. It was, dumbass. By the way, a lot of your atheist live streams are fucking boring. And your Christian live streams are pretty boring and stupid, too.